this is just a project from raspberrypi.org. It's a pretty fun project and kind of gets people acclimated and interested in writing simple Python programs and what you can do with them. I, I went down the rabbit hole with this project because one thing, if you noticed in the beginning intro, watch when I play these, like how much of a delay there is. This is essentially the biggest issue I've had with this project. And this is not because I have the audio misaligned in the video. There's a considerable amount of delay from when you push this to when you can hear the sound. So this is something that I started to research and get pretty deep on. And I found a very simple solution because as a musician, you know, this is, if you want to play this like a drum machine or a beatbox, it's challenging because you have to basically play a beat ahead of where you are and it's kind of impossible but i mean one thing that's cool is the way that the buffer uh, and i'll talk about that in a minute but the way that there's that delay it actually kind of acts as a governor or as a ceiling for the metronome hits or for a metronome so when you're playing this you can see that it's sort of only hits a certain speed. So it's actually kind of cool in that sense because now I can make these kind of glitchy beats with just kind of randomly hitting the buttons. And uh, so it's kind of an accidental thing. It doesn't quite work right, but if there's a way to control the buffer in real time, you could essentially have another dial on here maybe that sets the metronome and then you can just play random beats. So if you try to play a regular beat on this, I mean, it's challenging because like I said, these are so delayed by the time they play the sound. It's not like a keyboard where you, you know, imagine typing on a keyboard where you're trying to write something and the letters are coming up that far behind. So there is a simple fix that I figured out. So here's the code for the GPIO music box. Uh, and this is the part that I added. I'm not going to go into depth with this. Uh, if you have any questions about it, you can, you know, hit me up or leave a comment or raspberrypi.org has this whole project. Uh, that's how I did it. You know, I followed their tutorial. But so the, when I first did this project about eight months ago, I used an earlier version of Pygame. Pygame is a library that is for creating your own two-dimensional games and it luckily enough it has a digital mixer built into it to play game sounds so we import this just so that we can use the digital mixer that's included we're not obviously making a game but this is how we're playing the sounds by just utilizing this mixer eight months ago when i made this i was using an earlier version of pi game and they just released this big update to pi game and now we're at I believe version 2.0.0. So the good news is if you're doing this project uh, and you have 2.0 or later, this won't be a problem for you. But if for some reason you have to use an earlier version of Pi Game like I did, uh, you will find that there's that considerable amount of delay when you push the buttons. So what I figured out after doing a lot of different research and coming back to the project and taking a break and coming back again is that Basically, if we pre-initialize the Pi Game Mixer with a couple different values than what it's uh, initialized as by default, we can lessen the sound lag, and it all has to do with initializing a uh, smaller buffer size, which is what I wrote here. And that, oh, I also just said here too. So Pi Game 2.0 defaults to a, a buffer size of 512. I guess the other one must have been larger than that. I don't remember the exact value, but obviously it was a power of two, maybe it was 1024 or 2048. But so then these values, if you're familiar with music, should look familiar to you. You know, we have the sample rate, bit depth, and uh, two is just means it's stereo. Uh, you could also put a one here for mono, depending on how you want to play it back. But yeah, basically I just added these two lines of code and that solved the problem. So 
the first one pre-initializes it and then we make sure we initialize it with those values and then uh, we initialize pygame. Prior to this, pygame would be initialized with its own default values. So that's what was causing the problem. The buffer was too large. So now you can see that there's no delay from when we press a button and hear the sound. So the sound is obviously still a little bit after the button gets pushed, but the, the, there's a acceptable amount of delay, probably in milliseconds. So you can see there, like, there's almost a flam. Sometimes they miss trigger. So these are all things that would, you know, need to be worked out or figured out or just roll with it. Uh, I mean, this is just the simple project. Almost all of it is from Raspberry Pi. So, you know, this is a Creative Commons project and it's sort of an open source project. So the big concept in this that was challenging and that I did a lot of research on was this concept of debouncing. When the button is pressed, how long does it take for that button press to register? But also when it, uh, when the button is released was a very important concept too, because that's how the system knows to fire off the sound again. It, so there's like a, there's two components to a button press, right? When you go down and when you come back up. So that's why when you, if you were to hold this down, it's not like going like a machine gun, like da, 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 da. it's registering. Okay. The button went down. Once it comes back up, that's when the sound can be played again. And this is just a built-in library in Python. Now you can go about programming your own uh, script to, to run the buttons, but that's one of the great things about programming is that there's these different libraries we can use to our advantage. I want to explore some other items with this project. If you want to help out and work on this as sort of an open source project, I'll link the script and on my GitHub, and then you can, you can fork it or do whatever. And you can also get it from Raspberry Pi. It's a creative commons, I think 3.0. So it's share alike and everything. Um, but you can read more about the license on my GitHub. But now I think I would try to add some sort of metronome control, like I mentioned before maybe some sort of way to sequence this. And I think another really compelling idea for this project would be, you know, I have the Nord Drum 3P uh, and that is a very expensive piece of gear. You know, it's cost prohibitive to some people to get into electronic drums. But with this, uh, I, I just feel like, you know, electronic drums, the, the thing that makes them expensive or costly maybe is the module. And that's what controls the sounds. And with Raspberry Pi, I think it would be possible to program your own module, like I've done here essentially. And then you could just run wires to different triggers around like a drum kit and get some, I, I purchased some uh, material that's sort of like resistive. Uh, it's for like wearable technology stuff, I guess. Uh, but it, you know, it can register like, it has like resistance so you could probably program that to uh, make your own drum pads. So I don't think making the triggers and the drum pads is the hard part though. I think the harder part is having some kind of module, but I feel like even with something like the Diggy Tact or the Nord, uh, they're basically computers, simple computers, like a simple operating system, I, I think, and that are just programmed to run and communicate with controllers. So. I think uh, I'm going to continue working on this and see what I can do with it. And I think eventually it would be cool to try to make uh, my own electronic drum kit and make an open source electronic drum kit for people because it is expensive to get the gear uh, to do electronic drums. But that would be kind of a moonshot project, I guess, or something to continue working on in the background. But I think it would be very possible with something like this. You could set up a kick drum. 
you know, figure out how to make a little snare pad. The hi-hat would be the most challenging, right? Because of, I've talked about that in the Nord video a little bit, but you know, or you could probably make something like uh, a simpler version of a MIDI controller or uh, like a diggy tact, you know? I mean, I'm not saying this is anywhere near that, um, but I guess I'm just making the point that you need some kind of operating system that runs triggers. And I mean, this is that's what this is essentially, so. Mm -hmm.